Hi, good morning, everybody, and this is Baskar. You're watching Baskar Time. Please subscribe the channel. Okay, so in the last video, we are looking for memory overview, and in this video, we'll discuss memory mapping. How to do the memory mapping of our ARM processor? Okay, so last class, we're looking for all the things. Let's come to memory mapping. See, I already told that ARM processor having a 4 GB of addressable memory ranges from 0002 FFF. Maximum minimum value 00 and maximum value it is FFF. Okay, so and memory spaces, some part are allocated for internal peripherals within the processor, such as NVIC and debug components. So once we see the architecture of Cortex M3 processor, along with the core system, you have some debug components as well as NVIC. For the NVIC and debug components, this memory having some memory spaces. Okay, the memory locations of these internal components are fixed. So whatever is allocated the memories, the role it is fixed, we can't vary that one. This memory spaces is architecturally divided into a number of memory regions. So these are the different regions what we are going to use architecturally by seeing the architecture wherever it is required. So based on that, we are going to divide our memory systems. So that's why memory space are architecturally divided into a number of memory regions as shown in the figure. Okay, the processor design support a different types of memories and optimized arrangement for high performance. So, okay, so different memory regions. What are the different memory regions we are going to take on? One, it is a code memory region, a SAM region, peripheral region, RAM region, device region, as well as system vendor specification. Okay, we can divide to different ways. Okay, and here it is next, it is we can optimize it. Okay, the processor designed to support a different type of memories. It will support a different type of memories. Maybe it is a KJ memory and some vector tables also it will be supported. So different, it will be support for different type of memories. So by using the KJ memory and all, what happened, the performance of the system will increase. That's what we are telling this, this point. So this memory system it will be support for different cases. It increases the optimized arrangement for high the it increases the performance. Okay, so next we already seen that when different regions of operations will different regions of my memory. So looking for one by one. Okay, so next before going to that, so it's possible to store and execute the program code in SRAM and RAM regions. You have a different regions if I want to execute the program, so it is possible using a RAM. So what are the two regions? SRAM as well as RAM regions, SRAM as well as RAM regions, we're looking for the program execution. Okay, next, the memory, the program execution for peripherals, devices, and system memory regions is not allowed. If you want to do the program using the peripherals, the devices, and peripheral memory systems, so you have a peripherals and devices and system specific, and here in these regions, it is not possible. So while taking the program execution, take care about this. Okay, so the memory space for the NVAC and MPU SC, which are all the additional components of memory system, it is also my memory it is allocated some space for these components also. So that's why, and various system peripherals is called a system control space, it is allocated some memory addresses. Okay, let's see one by one. The first it is the address, it is code memory. The code memory ranges from 0002 1 FFF. So it is used for coding purpose and it is a 0.5 GB. It is also 512 memory memory space, primarily for the program code, not for the program code. And if I want to access this one, I can go for, if I want to access my instructions, I need to go for I code bus. If I want to access my data, so I'll go for D code buses. And default, if internally, if you're looking for it, of a vector table, this additional component, helpful for our programming conditions and default internally including the default vector table that is a part of the program memory and we're looking for i code as well as d buses in the code memory okay so next we're looking for the next memory or memory regions that is a sram next uh, it is a sram when come to sram sram region is located at the address of 2002 it is one uh, 3 FFF. It is also it is 0.5 GB we allocated and this SRAM regions out of 
one point per GB. So one MB of data we are load for the big band operations. It will be supported. And another 32 MB of this should be allowed for the big band alliance alias operations so we'll discuss what is a big band operations by i also and also i given one more video please watch on that what is a big band operations it will easily you can understand okay the first one mb of the sram regions it is bit addressable if the optional bit band features is included instruction fetches and data access are performed over the system buses if you want to access this particular memory regions it is possible using the system buses okay this is about our SRAM region so next to looking for so next regions it is our peripherals the peripherals also similarly just like in the previous cases it is also having the big band regions and bit analyzing weapon mb of data and having the address space of 04002 it is 5 ff the peripheral memory regions also have the size it is 512 and it is also what it's called 0.5 gb for the on chip peripherals and first MB bit we're looking for big band addressable and it is now to access this one as usually looking for system bus nothing is a difference between here it is uh, SRAM as well as this almost is both are same only but thing it is looking for it is in a RAM conditions looking for it is looking for how cheap peripherals we are going to use so next thing it is looking for it is one GP of data it is not a point per GP of our external RAM so in the external RAM ranges from 6002 to 9FFF, so totally it is a 1 GB, it was a 2 port of 512 MB of memories and is used for half chip peripheral and if you want to access a particular regions looking for system buses, use it to program the code as well as data fetches and data access, we can use this RAM regions. Okay, so next to looking for the next region. So uh, it is external devices and instrumentation. So device region also just like my, our previous uh, RAM region. So here it is a RAM region, almost the same. So but here it is looking for other peripherals or object peripherals of point by GP. We are going to use the device region contains the two slots of 512 MB memory space of total one GB per other peripheral, such as object peripherals. Okay, fetches and data access are performed over the system buses. That's why. So almost when come to a memory mapping of our RAM region or in a device region, both are using the system buses in order to access and it totally having a one GB of memory. So this is my memory uh, external devices looking for other peripherals or off chip condition of 0.5 GB we are going to use. And when come to here looking for off chip memory we are going to uh, use. Okay, next it is final it is private peripheral bus access. So once we see the architecture of this one, after my devices, you have a system or vendor specific. So it consists of ranges from E002 FFF. So and totally it consists of some of the part. It is used for system. Okay, and it consists of a private peripheral bus internal and private peripheral bus and debug external. So and it should be given support for of some of the internal components of my RM processor also and it consists of what are the blocks you having and how, how we are going to use what are the terms we are going to use first we need to understand so these are the some of the components and people components and some of looking for memory protections okay so instrumentation trace macro cell so once we see the architecture easily we can see these all terms if you want you can go the architecture and see that the, all the blocks is there so these are all the blocks allocated some particular memory addresses okay instrumentation trace macro cell it's nothing but itm nvac is nothing but nested vector interrupt controller fpb is nothing but the flash patch and breakpoint and dw is nothing but data watch point and trace and mpu is nothing but memory protection in it are performed to processor internal private peripherals versus PPP we are going to use and also it is an access TPIU and ETM so these are all the things that in our architecture cortex entry so just open your cortex entry architecture and you just see that all the components we are going to use so in order to these are all the components having some memory addresses so it all will come to here it is private peripheral bus architecture and having a particular memory addresses please go through these addresses okay please go through and you need to understand if they're asking in the exam please explain the memory mapping means so you need to write this block diagram of each one how we are going to allocate the memory okay thank you